Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. A uh, mentor of mine uh, often said, uh, addressed his friends or books he was signing as fellow pilgrims on the way to heaven. And that song reminded me of that. And as uh, we had pilgrims from Christ Church in the Holy Land these last two weeks, and that was probably resonating with their thoughts too, as Pastor Johnson, Pastor Temple, and about 32 others returned late, late last night. And so by God's grace, they're here with us. They're pressing on glorifying God today. So um, this morning we continue our, our message series on um, questions of faith, or rather, I've got questions and so does God. Our question for today is, do you believe this? Coming from John chapter 11, with Jesus and Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. And so we turn now to, uh, to John chapter 11, beginning with the, um, with the 17th verse. Excuse me. All right. On his arrival... Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me, will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was at home with my family one night this past spring watching TV and checking my Facebook as I'm prone to do. And I came across a post with a video about a friend I had not seen uh, in over 20 years who I was saddened and surprised to find out had a terminal illness and was in palliative care. His name was Kevin Troy, but all of us who served on summer staff at the Methodist camp in upstate New York uh, called him Bull because he looked like the character from that old TV show, Night Court. He was a big, tall, white, bald guy. And uh, our Bull was a military veteran and uh, he had a huge heart for the campers and for the staff who worked with him. I knew Bull was a Christian because we had shared in many worship experiences and spiritual conversations. Uh, and here he was in the news in this post because after serving his country in three branches of the military for almost 30 years, there were many people who were rallying behind him to help Bull see his goal of seeing his son Caleb graduate from high school. You see, since he wasn't physically able to go uh, to the graduation, they brought a special graduation ceremony to the VA Medical Center in Canandaigua, New York on Friday, May 24th of this past year. And seeing the pictures and videos, it brought back such strong memories for me, even in an instant. And even though we had not kept in touch for a very long time, I found deep feelings and thoughts and matters of faith uh, rising up uh, within me. I was grateful for the love that was surrounding my own friend in his moment of need and knew the love and peace of Christ 
was strong with him then and was strong with him now and knew that he had this assurance of salvation as a follower of Jesus Christ who believed in him and yet I was sad too. I was sad for Bull and his family. If the illness was to run its course as it was anticipated to, there were many who were going to greatly miss Bull for a very long time. And on August 1st, my friend joined the church triumphant, his here, his time here uh, seemingly ending far too soon. And so on this All Saints Day, I'm thinking about him as well as all of the Christ Church members who have passed on into glory with Christ this past year as well, whose family members perhaps have those mixed feelings of loss, but also the peace and assurance that comes with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In faith, we know they're in a better place and free from the brokenness of this world, and yet they are indeed so missed in the course of our days. In our scripture reading today, I believe that's where our sister Martha was. She had believed in Christ. This much we can tell from her conversation with Jesus. But she was also deeply grieving the passing of her brother Lazarus. Her grief and faith and hope were all mixed together in her thoughts, in her words that she shared with us that are there in scripture for us to know. She said, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Later in the verses, just beyond our selection for today, uh, it's when Jesus, who had shed tears as well, headed for the tomb of Lazarus and told others to roll away the stone. It's then that Martha also cautioned him, but Lord, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. And so with these mixed expressions of Martha's, uh, we're not really sure what her expectations were of Jesus throughout this story. But we know in the midst of such turbulent emotions and loss that Jesus was offering a steady foundation on which she could stand in issuing one of the great I am statements of the Gospel of John. For Jesus had said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And then he asked her, do you believe this? Belief. It's why Jesus came to them in the first place. When Jesus first heard the news that Lazarus was ill, he waited two extra days with his disciples before deciding to go there. And he told his disciples, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. And his disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad I was not there. And key in on these words, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. What Jesus wanted for his disciples and for those who were in the grieving community of Bethany that day was belief. The word belief or believe occurs in the Gospel of John 98 times. 98 references to believe or belief. It's one of his favorite words. In Greek, this is the word pistuo, which means to believe to the extent of complete trust and reliance, 
to believe in, to have confidence in, to have faith, to trust. And now here, Jesus is not only teaching Martha about resurrection and who he is, he's asking Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe I am the resurrection and the life? Do you believe that whoever lives by believing in me will never die? New Testament scholar Dr. Ben Witherington says this about how Jesus Christ is presented in the Gospel of John. Our author also believes that the two realms of heaven and earth can be and have been bridged in God's Son, who through the incarnation has become mediator between the two, with one foot in each realm throughout his earthly career. According to Jesus, it is belief in him that is that key of bridging the realms of heaven and earth in resurrection and living eternally with God. This question which we address today, do you believe this, is not a rhetorical one. Jesus was asking for a response from Martha for her own good, that she would know she knows this belief and that it would indeed save her too. For when one believes in Jesus, eternal life begins right then. Scholar Dr. N.T. Wright says this about this passage, the future resurrection is clearly affirmed, present, Undying eternal life is available, anticipating that resurrection for all who believe. Those who believe are given a real new identity in the present, a life which now will never die. In other words, the believer now possesses already a divinely given immortal life which will survive death and be re-embodied in the final resurrection. This life begins the moment of belief in Christ and the start of saving faith in him and simply continues on throughout this life, on into Jesus' eternal kingdom. There is then much greater boldness when facing death in the life of the believer, for it has been conquered already and the means of survival has been secured by the Son of God. By way of lightening the mood here, I would say that this author is not to be confused with another bearded churchman and scholar who likes to do in-depth study of biblical texts and travel the Holy Land. And we do welcome Pastor Temple back with us at Christ Church. And when we look at Jesus' public prayer, right before raising Lazarus, this purpose of moving people to saving belief in him is evident again, that it's in the forefront of Jesus' mind. He publicly prayed, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, which means he had already prayed and was aware there was a miracle already underway. I knew you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me, Lazarus, come out. And to the people's amazement, and perhaps even to Martha and Mary, out came Lazarus, still bound by the grave clothes. And there were two responses of the people that day. As John 11:45 says, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and seen what Jesus did believed in him. And there was another response in verse 46. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them Jesus had what Jesus had done and the religious leaders began to plot to have Jesus killed. It may seem a strange response to us today that such a fear-filled, violent response would come from someone simply being healed. But in their eyes, the following of Jesus was simply getting too big 
and threatened a delicate status quo in a political relationship with Rome who occupied their land. If Rome felt a revolution was underfoot, a violent counter response would be soon to come thereafter. And Caiaphas, the high priest, knew this, and later in John chapter 11, unwittingly was prophetic when he said, you do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation should perish. This very personal threat to Jesus' life, of course, came of no surprise to him or to his disciples, for they had tried to dissuade Jesus from coming anywhere near Jerusalem in the district of Judea. Many of Jesus' miracles had happened in much less conspicuous places and ways to the north or with far fewer people, but here in Bethany, they were within easy commuting distance to the religious and political epicenter of the nation of Israel. And Jesus came to Judea on purpose, at risk to himself, for this last great sign in the book of John, besides his own resurrection, out of love for all God's people, that they might gain saving belief in him as Messiah and in his resurrection. While Mar Martha and many others could answer positively to Jesus' question, do you believe I am the resurrection? There were others who did not. It was a yes or no question that eventually all of us must answer for ourselves. Jesus coming to Bethany to raise Lazarus forced people to choose and even forced a nation to choose whether they believed in him or not. He showed great love and courage in willingly laying down his life just so that we might believe and live in God forever by his grace through his cross through his resurrection. To those who believe, like those in Bethany did, Jesus meets with us even in our pain, enters our world, and weeps with us in our grief when someone close to us may have died. And yet, he asks us to believe and to trust in him and to allow him to lead us out of the dark shadows of death and into the light of his truth and resurrection. Sure, there will still be some sadness in missing our friends and loved ones, but the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. It is encouraging and comforting to know and trust Jesus is Lord over all, over death and over life and Lord of the resurrection. This is All Saints Day, as we remember our friends and family who have gone on in the Lord before us. We celebrate their presence for landing on that heavenly shore and the joy they must know in the glorious presence of the risen Christ who has gone on to prepare a place for them and for us. We give thanks for and remember the lives of the saints like Lazarus and Mary and Martha and Peter and James and John and Martin Luther and John and Charles Wesley and Phoebe Palmer and friends like Bull and all the other saints who have witnessed to the love of God and in faith in Christ in this world who are on our minds and hearts on this All Saints Sunday. 
I remember one time at camp, Bull and I talked with great courage about doing an all-night stakeout in the old scary building on the camp property, which I think probably all camps have at least one of these. And this one in particular had a reputation for having ghosts in it. And Bull said he wasn't afraid because of his belief in Christ. And he said, I know where I'm going. And now he is. He's there. As is those who are on our hearts, our mind, and minds today, who place their faith and lives in the trust of the Lord of the resurrection. Do you trust me? Do you believe in me? These are the questions that Jesus asks all of us even today. It is the call to discipleship and to walk in faith with the one who is Christ and Messiah and the resurrection and the life. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee will bow down and every tongue confess that Christ Jesus is Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.